session for the students of eighth semester of EC. And the subject is Mixed Signal Circuit Design. And the topic is Phase Locked Loop Module 4. To deliver the session, we have here Professor Jay Krishnan KR, who is an assistant professor in electronics department. About him, after completing his BTEC from Kusat, he did his MTech in VLSI design from NITK Suratkal. And presently, he is pursuing his PhD in Kusat. Device characterization, control systems engineering, etc., are some of his areas of interest. He has an overall teaching experience of over 18 years. And it is a great pleasure having you here for today. And I, on behalf of SAP, would like to welcome you, sir, to the session. Also, I welcome all the attendees to the session. And uh, one more thing, attendees, uh, please note that you can avail the Q&A option available on your screen to post your doubts. And uh, those doubts will be answered later in the session. The option is available near the chat window in the form of three dots. You can see it there. And so you can make use of that option for posting your doubts and all. So that's it. And uh, so let's start the session. Thank you. And over to you, sir. Thank you, Sridhi. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear students. Here, the topic to be covered in this session is the phase lock loop under module four of the elective course mixed signal circuit design. Phase lock loops are finding application in a multitude of designs and the phase lock loop is an inevitable component in the electronics and communication field. And, uh, you have studied the concept of phase lock loop in your uh, lower semesters. And in this subject, we are going to approach this design in a VLSI perspective. And before Going into the details of this phase lock loop on our session, let me introduce the flow of this seminar. And we'll begin with an introduction to phase lock loop. And immediately after the introduction, I will touch some of the applications of phase lock loop. It is uh, needed there. That is why I am uh, introducing the applications uh, in the very first slide itself. And uh, then there is an evolution behind the refinement of this phase lock loop. I will explain briefly that evolution of the phase lock loop. And the major concept or the major principle of this uh, phase lock loop is the concept of phase locking. And it will be introduced in detail. And from there, we will reduce the condition for phase lock or the condition to be satisfied by the entire system to have a locked condition of the input and output frequencies. And uh, then the PLL in its totality in the block diagram level will be explained. And later, but uh, the individual components of the PLL will be ex explained with emphasis to the phase detector. So the phase detector will be uh, introduced and later the VCO and or the voltage control coordinator and the low pass. So the thrust is on the phase detector. I am, I am giving the thrust to the uh, design, not design, the explanation of the phase detector. And uh, I will go on to the calculation of phase error and we will formulate or we will have a formula for finding out the phase error that can happen when during the uh, phase low condition. And uh, a simple circuit implementation of the phase low loop in the CMOS technology will be introduced by a, a very simple circuit diagram uh, which employs the uh, phase detector and the voltage control process. 
and uh, the last two slides or two or three slides it pertains to the most important part of this uh, lecture session where the pll in the block diagram represented using the block diagram will be expressed using a linear model where we will have the linear models for the phase detector the vcu and the low pass filter and the linear model will exactly be in the s domain so that we can do some system level calculations on the linear model evaluate the open loop transfer function the closed loop transfer function then we can formulate the characteristic equation from there we can deduce the damping ratio and the natural frequency of operation and finally we can have a conclusion on how the uh, frequency the cut off frequency of the low pass filter is going to affect the performance of this phase lock loop so that is what i intend so uh, we will begin with a block diagram then we will go to the circuit diagram then the block diagram will be linearized and a system level uh, approach will be uh, done and from that we will go to the open loop uh, transfer function we will reduce the closed loop transfer function find out the type of the system find out the order of the system and uh, then we will go for the characteristic equation from there we will evaluate the damping ratio and the natural frequency of operation and finally we will uh, find a relationship between the cut off frequency of the uh, low pass filter and how this selection of this low pass filter is going to affect the operation of the pll in its entire that is the aim of this session okay let me go to the next slide so uh, the uh, phase lock loop the concept of phase lock loop is introduced in the early 1930s and a basic block diagram was prepared in the mid 1930s and even now even uh, after a near century that basic block diagram is being used for the implementation of pll the, the in the uh, initial stage the pll's were implemented in the discrete format whereas in this era uh, the latest pll is available in the market with uh, around 45 nanometer uh, technology so the basic block diagram it is remaining the same and there are additions there are uh, additions in the sense the uh, different blocks are improvised by uh, different types of algorithms and that is be, being uh, incorporated into the design and the second point the it is continue the continues challenging the designers the implementation and the realization of pls even after uh, a near century of its conceptualization it is continuing to challenge the designers so the challenges are implement are in implementing the design and different technology modes and processes as you may be aware uh, we we uh, are uh, now or the, in the academic level we are now having around uh, 45 nanometer processes available and at your lab at our labs and uh, when the technology got shrink from 90 nanometer to 65 nanometer or 45 nanometer this is even though the circuit is remaining the same the transistor characterization is a little bit uh, difficult and we have to characterize the transistors first to suit the operations of all the basic blocks of the pll and then those uh, circuits needs to be incorporated in the uh, pll design so it is a challenging task as the technology gets shrunk from say 65 nanometer to 45 nanometer you have to rework everything every analysis needs to be reworked every circuit needs to be reworked every layer needs to be reworked so it is a challenging task as far as the designers are concerned and uh, also the characterization of the circuits for different uh, applications 
are uh, the steps for the characterization are different. For example, uh, PLLs are used for block generation in microprocessors, and also they are used for frequency synthesis in a cell phone. The application may sound similar, but the characterization of the PLL for these two applications are entirely different. So that is also a challenge, a challenging task as far as the designers are concerned. So the underlying uh, design issues in uh, different applications or in various applications are are uh, amply uh, or uh, they are having ample variants. They are entirely different when it comes to the circuit perspective. And uh, to uh, list down some applications, the uh, PLLs are finding applications in memories. Microprocessors, hard disk drive electronics, radio frequency and wireless transceivers, and optical fiber transceivers. And as you know, the memories, microprocessors, the hard disk drive electronics all require clock. And the clock and data synchronization is of utmost importance in memories, microprocessors, uh, hard disk drive electronics, etc. So, a, a, a very small error in the synchronization of the clock and the data in all these applications will be detrimental to the operation of that entire system itself. So we have to make sure that the uh, clocks are are very accurate and PLL can uh, help us or PLL can be employed to ensure the accuracy of clocks and also other uh, sources of signals which are to be used in these applications. And coming to the communication side, we are having the uh, radio frequency and wireless transceivers. So the radio frequency communication includes the uh, the common amplitude modulation uh, transceivers, the frequency modulation transceivers, and the high-end transceivers which are uh, making use of the pulsed kind of uh, transmissions. All these require the frequency synthesis and also the carrier generation and uh, the demodulation process itself requires the carrier generation and all this can be achieved precisely with the help of the uh, phase lock loops and moreover the optical fiber receivers which are the uh, which are uh, having uh, or the most sought after form of communication in our era, they are also this base lock loop in the reception of the uh, uh, light converted data, that is the uh, light converted voltages. So we have to uh, make sure that the pulses are carrying the right information at the right time. So uh, to be specific in the applications, let me uh, explain or uh, let me introduce some uh, applications like the frequency multiplication and synthesis, which are uh, achieved with the help of PLLs. So what is the need for frequency multiplier? Uh, the frequency source it should it need to be very much stable as far as the operation of a circuit is concerned. And when the operation of the circuit is heavily dependent on the reliability and the stability of the uh, frequency source, then we need not go for uh, different uh, frequency sources having different frequencies. But instead, we can use a single stable frequency source and the different sub-circuits of this uh, the complex circuit may be using different frequencies, which can be derived from a uh, master stable oscillator and with the help of this PLMs and that is at least the frequency multiplication and frequency synthesis is used to generate accurate and precise frequencies very fine steps as required in wireless transceivers. so uh, say uh, for, uh, to 900 megahertz you have to shift your frequency from uh, 110 megahertz to 900 megahertz in say steps of 60 megahertz each and that can be accomplished with the help of or by configuring the PLN as a frequency in the size. 
and uh, as we know the uh, entire electronic uh, industry is towards the digital end and the uh, digital circuits are having the problem associated with the skew of clocks and data as well as the uh, jitter that is happening to the signals and with this phase lock loops we can have a very good reduction in the uh, skew of uh, clocks and as well as the data and also the PLLs can be used to suppress jitter and uh, we can have the phase lock clock recovery using PLLs. So, uh, this is what the uh, basic block diagram of a PLL is and I have written something called an evolution. So the phase lock loop evolution. So what is the significance of that term evolution? And the basic uh, definition of a PLL is that it is a feedback system system that compares the output phase with the input phase. That is what is being done in a PLL. So the input block should be able to compare the output from the phase lock loop as well as the input that is applied to the input block. And uh, the detector circuit which accomplishes this job of Comparing the phases of the input and the feedback signal is called a phase detector. So you can see a forward path and a feedback path in the cross loop system. So essentially, the PLL is a uh, feedback system. So it is having a forward path and a feedback. In the forward path, so it is implemented by using a phase detector and a voltage controlled oscillator. And coming to the voltage controlled oscillator, voltage controlled oscillator is a signal source whose output frequency will be dependent on the input DC voltage that is applied. Input DC voltage that is applied. That is by varying the input average voltage, you can vary the frequency of oscillations at the output of this voltage controlled oscillator. And uh, to be specific, this input voltage, the control voltage to the voltage controlled oscillator needs to be a pure DC. That is, uh, no high frequency ripple components are allowed. So we have to suppress the ripple components to the maximum possible extent. The basic diagram shows a phase detector whose output is directly connected to the input of the voltage controlled oscillator. But the phase detector output is noisy in nature. It is having the low frequency component, the DC component, as well as high frequency component. So, what is needed at the input of the voltage controlled oscillator as the control voltage is, a, is almost a pure DC. So obviously, what we have to do is to filter the output from the phase detector and provide the DC component the low frequency component to the input of this voltage controlled oscillator and the circuit that performs this operation is a low pass filter which will suppress all frequencies which are other than the near DC frequencies. So it is a low pass filter. So the evolution is in the sense the detector and VCO are the uh, are those blocks which were present in the primitive uh, inception of the concept about uh, phase lock loop and later due to some pertinent pertinent issues associated with the controlled voltage provided to the voltage controlled oscillator we have introduced the low pass filter in between the phase detector and the uh, voltage controlled oscillator so uh, a voltage controlled oscillator and the phase detector is there with a low pass filter as a sandwich and the phase needs to be monitored continuously and this cannot be done in a manual manner that is what we are employing a feedback control and the feedback path unity gain feedback path provided here is the automatic aspect of 
this phase lock loop which uh, in no time not time uh, attains the settling phase and uh, the frequency will become stable and now what is the concept of phase lock so the principle of a phase lock loop is the phase locking between the input signal and the feedback signal and the feedback signal is the output from the vcu and input signal is what we are giving externally to the phase detector and uh, have a look at the waveforms shown in figure a so there is a reference clock it is a reference clock which is uh, represented here for the explanation of this uh, concept of phase lock and vck is the reference clock and uh, next one it is the v vcu that is the output from the vcu and now we are going to compare this clock the uh, clock waveform and uh, v vcu in uh, the initial uh, portion itself you can see there is a phase lag of delta t existing between the uh, clock reference clock and the output of the vc and uh, vc output lags the reference clock by a time is equal to delta t and now the phase locking refers to the elimination of this error actually phase locking is is the is a process by which this error in the phase is eliminated so theoretically speaking i we have to eliminate this error to zero but ideally there will be a constant error. but the frequency will be catched up even though there is a finite error in phase the frequencies of this clock reference clock and the vco output will be catched up and Look at the second figure, figure B. The, uh, how can how we can align the output phase of the VCO with the phase of the reference? Initially, you are having a VCK and VVCO apart by delta t seconds, say seconds, and there is a control voltage V control, and this V control is that voltage is provided to the voltage controlled oscillator to attain the phase lock and at t is equal to t1 the uh, difference in phase exists between the reference clock vck and the vco output vvc and now can you notice any difference between the frequencies of vck and vvc obviously there is a difference in the frequency clock frequency is remaining the reference clock frequency is remaining the same whereas the vco output frequency is gradually changed and this vco output frequency the gradual change in the vco output frequency is on the basis of this control voltage generated or applied to the voltage controlled oscillator so as and when this control voltage is applied to the voltage controlled oscillator which is derived from the output of the phase detector the frequency of the output frequency of the voltage controlled oscillator starts changing and this change in frequency in the output of the voltage controlled oscillator happens until the uh, frequency of this voltage controlled oscillator output gets catched up with the reference clock frequency so at t is equal to uh, in the figure it is uh, uh, shown that the uh, frequency gets catched up frequency gets catched up at this uh, particular point say at t is equal to t1 the catching up process is over and now the uh, frequencies of voltage controlled oscillator output of the voltage controlled oscillator and the reference clock is locked and now the phase locking is over and the vco control input v control initiates and control the gradation in the frequency of vco output and this gradation is done in a such a manner that there is a 
a perfect locking of the frequencies of the reference clock voltage and the voltage converter. So this is what the uh, the concept of phase locking is in the uh, phase lock. Now. How can we attain this phase locking? So the uh, principle behind the phase locking is a gradation in frequency. And in order to have the gradation in the frequency, the following integration of phi is equal to integral omega 0 plus kv0 into v control dt is to be happen. And how can we make sure that this integration is taking place in the uh, PLL or phase lock loop. This needs to be done at the VCO level and essentially the voltage controlled oscillator needs to carry out this frequency gradation in the form of this integration and hence the P VCO block of the phase lock loop is essentially an integrator so, and that integrator has to perform this function of integration where the frequency gradation is carried out so that the phase locking is attained. Now to align the rising edges of VVCO with VC, what do we mean by aligning the rising edges of VVCO with VC is what the phase locking, the process of phase locking. So what are the steps to be followed so that the rising edges of VCO output and the reference clock can be aligned. The VCO frequency, step one, the VCO frequency is stepped up to a higher value at VC. As a result, the faster phase accumulation results are shown in the previous step. Then the phase error starts diminishing in a gradual manner and the phase error vanishes at t is equal to d2 and from there onwards the vvco the output of vco and vvc vck the reference clock continues to remain aligned provided the original value of v control corresponding to this frequency locking or the phase locking is preserved as and when there is a change in V control, then we should understand that output frequency of the VCO has already changed and it is getting compared with the reference and the phase detector has changed its value. So the V control, the control voltage of the VCO got changed and now the frequency is not in the log form. Okay. Uh, so we have begun this uh, discussion with the stepping up of the VCO frequency and the same can be attained with the stepping down of the frequency of the VCO to a lower value. Then in a nutshell, the essence, we can say phase alignment can be achieved only by a temporary frequency change. We need to have only a temporary frequency change so that the phase alignment is uh, obtained. And the phase alignment task is achieved into two steps. That is, we have to momentarily change the VCO frequency, it will change, and we have to compare the phases of VCO output and the reference signal to ensure phase lock. That is what is explained as of now. And what is the phase lock condition? Phase lock condition means in order to get the loop to be locked. The difference in the phase of the input signal and the feedback signal must be a constant and preferably very, very small. This uh, look at the explanation. It is, it is described to be a constant. It is not uh, the difference. It is not described as zero. But it should be a value which is close to the phase difference should be constant and it should be as small as possible. 
that means the difference in phase is not changing with respect to so we can write mathematically or express this mathematically as the rate of change in phase difference the rate of change in phase difference is equal to zero. that is d by dt of phi out minus phi in is equal to and we know the rate of change of angular displacement is the angular frequency so d phi by dt is the angular frequency omega so the angular frequency corresponding to the output phase of vco is omega out and the angular frequency corresponding to the input signal it is omega in so the condition for phase locking is the angular frequencies should be preserved the input frequency and the output frequency should be one and the same we have started it from uh, a condition that the phase difference should be constant and should be as small as possible so that constant when uh, applied with a derivative function will be equal to zero resulting in the condition that the frequencies of the vco output and the input signal should be one and the same so we can say when log pll generates an output pll generates an output possessing exactly the same frequency as at its input with a slightly small phase so input and output frequencies are in a locked condition and there can be there can be a very small phase difference existing between the input and output frequencies in this loop so the uh, two step phase alignment task is this uh, is uh, represented in the uh, figure and phase detector and the vco i have already explained it and now you know what is the need for lpf and uh, for your reference i have included in this slide what is the need for low pass filter again okay. phase detector output carries the dc component or the near dc components which are low frequency components and the ripple components uh, the high frequency components as you know the ripple which is present in the uh, pulsating dc obtained from a rectifier and vco requires its control voltage v control to be quiet quiet means it needs to need not be varying that means it should almost be a dc and uh, in the steady state for a perfect operation so in order to act, uh, in order to obtain a quiet signal from the output of the phase detector it needs to be filtered and that is accomplished with the help of a low pass filter the simple pl the what uh, depicted here in figure b is this uh, block diagram representation of a simple pl and it has a low pass filter sandwiched between the phase detector and the voltage control oscillator so now that forms the basic block diagram pertaining to a simple pl and uh, now uh, we are in a position to explain the constituent blocks and uh, in your lower semesters you have studied the low pass filter and i think uh, in the linear integrated circuits you have studied the voltage control also so uh, my thrust will be on the phase detector and uh, i will cover the voltage control oscillator and low pass filter to some extent but we have to begin with the phase detector so what is a phase detector how can we implement a phase detector and uh, in a black box level you can see the definition of a phase detector and its uh, transfer function so the phase detector is having two inputs v1 of t and v2 of t and it is having a v out of t again it is a voltage and the phase detector as the name itself implies the output voltage v out of t is not uh, dependent on either v1 of t or v2 of t but it is dependent on the phase difference between v1 of t and v2 of t so you can see that it is a differential operation that is happening here the 
output of the phase detector is proportional to difference in the voltage between V1 and V2. Unlike the difference in the instantaneous voltages between V1 and V2. Here, what we are doing is uh, we have to uh, we have to extract an average voltage corresponding to the phase difference between input signal V1 of T and I will explain it uh, in detail. Before that, let's have a look at the uh, transfer characteristics of the phase detector. Transfer characteristics of the phase detector. It is a plot between phase difference versus the average output voltage of this phase detector. So, what is the phase, di phase difference? It is in the x-axis and it is represented as delta phi. And in the y-axis, you are having V out bar. That representation is of utmost significance. V out bar pertains to the average voltage. It is not any instantaneous voltage or any peak. It is the average voltage. So when there is no difference in phase at the input, what happens? The average voltage at the output is equal to zero. And as the difference builds in the positive direction, the average voltage at the output goes the or increases in the positive direction and the uh, when the difference is negative this difference is negative the average voltage gets built up in the negative direction okay now you can see that it is almost a straight line or say we have to restrict the operation of this detector in the linear region itself and so, how can we linearize it? That is another task and we will discuss it later. So, here have a look at this one. Here at this point, this difference is equal to zero. Output voltage, average output voltage is equal to zero. And it builds up and the phase difference increases. And also, it builds down when the phase difference increases. And it is uh, explained here in this one. Uh, look at this. Uh, circuit implementation of a simple phase detector. The XOR operation is uh, can be used. XOR operation can be utilized for extracting the information of the difference in phases between the two input signals. So it is a simple XOR gauge. And what is XOR operation? When the inputs of inputs to an XOR gate are different then the output will be equal to a logic high. And when the input is same, the output of the XOR will be at logic low. So, 0, 0 corresponds to 0, 1, 1 corresponds to 0, 0, 1 and 1, 1, 0 corresponds to a logic high. So, we are making use of that principle here, V1 of T and V2 of T, and V2 of T lacks V1 of T by delta phi. Now, look at the output. The maximum value of the output is plus VDD it is not changing, but instead we can see there is a pulse corresponding to the difference in the phase between V1 and V2. As the phase difference increases or decreases, width of this pulse decreases or increases or decreases. And as a result, what happens to the average value of the voltage? Definitely, the average value of the voltage will change as and when phase difference changes. So, it is clearly depicted here for different values of phase. Say delta phi uh, is equal to 0, and delta phi is equal to 0, V1 and V2 coincides, and the output is only a spike. And this spike, it uh, represents that there will be a simultaneous stepping of these voltages V1 and V2 from 0 to 1. And in this very small duration, but a finite duration, both these signals will be having equal values and it represented, uh, the output will be represented as a And the average value will be a small. And when uh, the difference in phase between V1 and V2 is equal to pi by 2, Look at the width of the pulse and also the increased width of the pulse results in an increased average voltage for your phase detector. And when it is equal to pi, when the phase, detect, uh, phase difference is equal to pi, that means 
all the inputs are out of phase 180 degree out of phase and what happens to the average voltage average voltage and after pi again we are increasing or the phase difference is getting increased to 3 pi by 2 so what happens the average voltage decreases or the width of the pulse decreases and that is depicted here the delta phi versus v out bar for different phase differences from 0 to pi it increases which is a maximum from 3 to 2 pi it decreases and in the negative direction also from 0 to minus pi it increases maximum voltage is equal to v out bar and from thereafter it gets decreased to minus uh, zero at minus. This is the uh, view versus delta phi for phi ranging from zero to one. That is a complete cycle of uh, phase difference. So, the phase detector is a circuit where its average output voltage view is linearly proportional to the phase difference between linearly proportional to the phase difference between its inputs. Linear. That is the linearity that is built or that is uh, necessary from a phase difference. The ideal linear operation results in a transfer function as shown in the figure. And if the transfer function is not linear, then we have to limit the operation of the phase detector to that part of the transfer function where the uh, operation is linear. And uh, the transfer function process uh, origin for delta phi is equal to zero, and the slope of this transfer function is called KPD, the uh, gain of this phase detector. And it is expressed in volts per radians. And an XOR phase detector is the simplest phase detector, and its operation is explained. And now I am coming to the next two blocks, ECO and LP. So, what is a voltage controlled oscillator? Voltage controlled oscillator is different from our fundamental oscillators. How it is different? Here, the output frequency is controllable, it is controlled with the help of an input voltage. As and when we change the input voltage, then the output frequency from the VCO changes. And the design of this VCO is essentially similar to the design that is employed for our fundamental uh, oscillators and it needs to satisfy the Berkhausen criteria for sustained oscillation and the uh, Berkhausen criteria for sustained oscillation states that uh, modulus of if A is the forward path factor and beta is the feedback, feedback path factor then modulus of A beta should be equal to 1 and phase angle of this one should be equal to 1 uh, coming to the low pass filter, the low pass filter is used to filter the output of this uh, phase detector circuit. And the phase detector circuit is having DC components and also DC, near DC, and also high frequency retrieval. But the control voltage to be given to the VCO should be essentially a DC, it should be quiet and this DC. So to remove that, let it employ a low pass. Okay. And the low pass filter implemented in most technologies can be uh, a simple RC. It can range from a simple RC filter section to an active low pass filter. So it depends on the accuracy that is to be uh, extracted from the phase law. So for the laboratory or academic uh, activities, we can uh, make use of the RC low pass filter and for precise applications, the active low pass filters are. How can we calculate the phase error that is resulting in PLR? So, uh, this plot pertains to the calculation of this phase error and uh, the plot which is shown, waveforms shown in the left hand side of this figure, it is waveforms when PLL is in the low frequency. So, this is the phase detector output voltage, and this is the 
filtered voltage in the lumbus filter. So in sum, and we have to eliminate the ripple to the maximum possible. How to find out the phase error in a phase lock loop? We have to construct the VCO and the phase detector characteristics. So what is the VCO characteristics and what is the phase detector characteristics? Output of the VCO is the uh, signal that is generated and input to the VCO is the one that is evolved from the phase detector after low pass filtering. So the transfer function of or the transfer characteristics of your uh, voltage controlled oscillator is a plot between controlled voltage and the output and it is uh, a linear plot and it starts from omega zero and as we control varies what happens this frequency varies to uh, some new values and at omega is equal to omega one corresponding to the control voltage v1 the phase gets low and that is what is happening the voltage controlled and regarding the phase detector the transfer characteristics is of the phase detector is a plot between the input phase difference and the output voltage in front here the output voltage is the average of the pulses that is then here i have allocated when phase difference is equal to zero output average voltage is again it is a state The input and output frequencies are low, then the locked frequency is represented as omega 1. Then the required oscillator control voltage for this locked frequency is V1. And this log volt this voltage V1 is to be generated by the phase. So, how what is the condition? Omega out is equal to omega 0 plus A V C O into V control. Omega out is equal to omega 0 plus k v c o into v control. So, omega 0 is the difference, the v c o value. Here, it is not the v c o value, the shift in difference and is omega 0 plus the uh, expression for this particular line. And this line is having a slope of k v c o and the x axis we are having the parameter v control. So, it is essentially the representation of a line with it is not starting from the origin, but it is having some other inputs. Omega out is equal to omega 0 plus a v c into v one. And similarly, we can have an expression for v out bar. Here it is represented as v pd bar. And v pd bar is equal to, here the y intercept is equal to 0 and it starts from 0. So, v pd bar is equal to the slope of this line that is k p d and the uh, independent variable delta form. So the expression is of a straight line that is VPD bar is equal to KPD into delta. And we are going for a back substitution. Back substitution means they, we can find out what is V1. So V1 we have to find it out. So what is V1? V1 is V control. So replace V control with V1 and obtain an expression for V1 as omega 1 minus omega 0 divided by A V 0. And this omega out is equal to omega 1 and V control is equal to V1 when the slope happens. So, V1 is equal to omega out omega 1 minus omega 0 divided by AVC. And similarly, we can have an expression for phi 0. Phi 0 is equal to V1 divided by KPD from this equation. V1 divided by KPD. V1 is already found out and phi 0 is equal to omega 1 minus omega 0 divided by APD into KVC. APD is the slope corresponding to phase detector and KVCO is the slope corresponding to uh, the voltage control oscillator, the characteristics of the voltage control oscillator. The phase error is dependent on the input frequency, it is dependent on the product APD and KVC. And in the initial slides, it is uh, mentioned that the phase error should be a constant and preferably should be very, very small. So, how can we minimize this phase error? The minimization of the phase error can be uh, carried out by maximizing the product APD into KVC. So, 
we have to maximize the product and without affecting the stability of the and that is how the phase around can be now so uh, it is the block level schematic that we have formulated the theory behind the condition or the theory behind the concept of stoking and now it is mathemat mathematically modeled and we are having an expression and from this expression we found out the parameters that needs to be controlled so that this phase is minimal and now how to implement these blocks the phase detector the low pass filter and the oscillator voltage controlled oscillator in a CMOS step so this figure that is uh, copied from Rasa V, B Rasa V, the textbook on analog CMOS integrated circuit design. And uh, here it is the XOR gate. You know, this XOR gate is the phase detector. And in your uh, VLSI design paper that you have studied in S7, yeah, in S7, uh, you have studied the realization of gates in different uh, logical styles. So you can adopt any one of the logic style to get the uh, XOR gate implemented in the CMOS technology. And then comes the low pass filter, which is here it is an uh, RC section. The resistance, it will be uh, realized using the silicon and the capacitance will be realized using the MOS capacitor. That means the MOS transistor itself will be used for realization of this capacitor. So, we will find out the cutoff frequency and we will design an RC section and so that you can extract the uh, uh, DC component of this phase detector. And then comes the voltage controlled oscillator. So the voltage controlled oscillator shown here is a uh, is in a cross coupled form. Here we are using two transistors, say M1 and M2, and M1 and M2 are having their drains connected to the uh, inductor, and uh, this forms the tank circuit. And the tank circuit is used for the frequency. And now if we are using the varactor diodes here for the frequency and the principle employed here is the negative GMLC tank circuit for uh, the oscillation, negative GMLC. So it is a uh, bit wider topic uh, that is the realization of this negative GMLC. Uh, uh, GM means the transconductor and L is the inductance and C is the capacitor. And now uh, earlier this inductor fabrication was a tedious process in using the VLSI uh, technologies. But now inductor fabrication to some extent is possible. So the inductors can be housed within the integrated circuit. So this is the simple realization of a VLSI using CMOS technology. Now once more the phase detector RC section and the voltage control. Uh, try to uh, draw this voltage control oscillator using transistors, and you have to uh, get uh, familiarized to the differential operation that is happening. The output you are uh, taking as a differential output voltage. So please uh, try to point out this difference. The output uh, is a differential voltage expected from this GM, negative GMLC oscillator, oscillator based. Now, the analysis of this wheel. And uh, what is most important is, uh, it is able to, or it is very simple to uh, schematic uh, do the simulation of that simple PLL by using cadence or mentor graphics or tools like that. But in order to match the frequency that is uh, desired for our application, we have to do so many analysis and you have to control so many parameters. 
and the capacitance that is present in circuit after laying out it needs to be precisely controlled and we have we should have a very sound knowledge of the various capacitances that are associated with the transistors and other uh, devices that is fabricated in uh, the cmos technology so as far as the uh, digital part that means the xor part is concerned there may not be that much difference or that much uh, problems associated with the realization but when it comes to when it comes to low pass filter and also the voltage control oscillator the task is very tedious and we have to uh, do it in a systematic that is why we are going to have the analysis of the simple pln and it is done by using a linear now the uh, phase detector is modeled as a subtractor and actually it is a subtractor what happens the input signal and the output signal is compared the comparison basic comparison operation between uh, two signals is by the subtraction extracting the difference between the two signals is necessary for comparison so we will have a threshold when the difference is uh, below the threshold output will be something when the difference is above the threshold the output will be some other voltages so it is modeled as a subtractor and the subtractor output necessarily needs to be amplified and the amplification factor is represented by kpd and kpd is familiar to you because it is used in the ransom function of this uh, or uh, ransom character of the phase, uh, phase detector and uh, there we represented it as the slope of that particular linear uh, graph now the uh, second one is a first order low pass filter i am uh, taking a simple uh, low pass filter is a first order low pass filter with a transfer function a common transfer function for the first order one is 1 by 1 plus s by omega lpf where omega lpf will be minus 3 db bandwidth of uh, your low pass filter. and now the third one it is the voltage control oscillator so previously i have mentioned that it is an integrator voltage control oscillator is necessarily an integrator so what is the transfer function of an integrator when it comes to the integration operation in the time domain it is represented as a function and when it is uh, transformed into the laplace domain it is 1 by s that is the integration of here also you are having the s in the denominator and what is this kvco again uh, i have explained it in the transfer from the voltage control oscillator and kvco is the slope of that particular uh, transfer so the uh, vco which is modeled as a low pass filter or an integrator is like this kvco divided by s and there is the feedback path uniquely feedback path this is the uh, linear model of a simple phase lock plane now the analysis of this so you have all have studied the control system theory and now we are going to apply that control system theory into this uh, low pass filter or uh, the pll linear uh, model so it is having two transfer function one is the open loop transfer function the other one is the closed loop transfer function. what is the transfer function h of s open is equal to pi out by pi in of s and pi out of by pi is simply the product open loop transfer function is simply the product of transfer function is represent in the open path from input to output that is a forward path without any feedback so apd is the transfer function corresponding to your phase detector 1 by 1 plus s by omega lpf is the transfer function the low pass filter kvco by s is the transfer function of vco so simply it is open is equal to kpd 1 by 1 plus s by omega lpf kvco divided by s and there is one pole and s is equal to minus omega lpf it is obvious from the open loop transfer function and the other pole is located at s is equal to zero and the type of a system is defined as the number of poles occurring at origin here number of poles occurring at origin is equal to 1 hence 
this PLL represented using the linear model is a type one uh, system since it is having uh, one pole at the origin and as S approaches infinity. So what is the significance of S approaching infinity? S approaching infinity means S is equal to J omega approaching infinity. So what is this S is equal to J omega approaching infinity? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, loop gain uh, s is equal to j omega approaching zero. You have studied the final value theorem. So, what happens to the response of the system at t is equal to infinity? That means at settling, how should be the response of the system be like? So, in order to in t is equal to infinity, we can apply s is equal to zero. That is the final value theorem saying. So that is the significance of s is equal to zero. And when s is equal to zero, what is the loop gain? S is equal to zero means one by zero. Here comes one by zero. And one by zero means infinity. The loop gain is approaching infinity. And the PLL under under log the condition ensures that the change in phi out is exactly equal to change in phi in as s goes to zero. And s is going to zero, the difference in a uh, output phase is equal to difference in phi out is equal to phi in phi out is equal to phi in. And this predicts the following most important property of the PL. The input excess phase varies very slow. So how can we say S is equal to zero means input access phase is varying slowly? You have to substitute S is equal to J omega is equal to j omega is equal to zero means omega is tending to zero omega is tending to zero means frequency is zero that means input signal is very 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 slowly then we can track easily the output excess phase and if the transient has vanished but what is the what is meant by vanishing of the transient the output characteristics can be uh, specified in two regions the transient region and the steady state region. So the transient vanishes as and when the output or the response of the system enters into the steady state condition. And the output of the system theoretically enters into a steady state condition when t approaches infinity. Here t approaches infinity means s approaching zero by the use of final value theorem. And the change in phi out is exactly equal to the change in phi. So we can have the output phase tracking input phase when s is equal to. So this is the uh, analysis of your uh, simple PLL linear model by using the open loop transfer. And now we have to evaluate the since it is concerned with the frequency, we have to find out what is the damping that can happen to the frequency, what is the natural frequency of the system and what is the damping. All these parameters can be evaluated from the characteristic equation of the system. To find out the uh, characteristic equation of the system, we have to find out the closed loop transfer function and what is the closed loop transfer function of a system having forward transfer function g and feedback transfer function h g by r is equal to g by 1 plus h. Here, omega uh, out by omega in of s is the cross loop transfer. And in the open loop, I have mentioned this, it is phi out by phi in, the phases. Here it is mentioned as omega out by omega in. So is there any difference? No, there is a linear relationship existing between omega out and phi out. Because omega out is equal to d by dt of phi out. And omega in is equal to d by dt of phi in. So you can write either as hs cos d is equal to omega out by omega in of s or it is simply the same as uh, hs cos d is equal to phi out by phi in s in the closed condition. And on reducing the equation in the form g by 1 plus gh, you will get hs cos d is equal to the product kpd kvco divided by s square by omega lpf plus s plus kpd kvc. And from this, we can find out the uh, damping factor and the natural frequency of four frequencies. 
and here uh, have a look at the characteristic equation what is the characteristic equation is the denominator of the clause 2 transfer function equated to zero and here the denominator of the clause loop transfer function is a second order equation or a quadratic equation so this loss loop system is a second order system and you can compare this second order characteristic equation to the basic or the fundamental characteristic equation of a second order system general characteristic equation of a second order system as s omega or s square plus 2 theta omega n s plus omega n square is equal to 0 so equate the coefficients of s square which equate the coefficients of s and equate the constants you can evaluate the uh, uh, necessary parameters from this character so what we can conclude is the simple pll is a type 1 system and it is having an order 2 and the response of a type 1 system we have studied the response of a type 1 system order 2 system to various inputs like step input ramp input parabolic input and so on I am not going into details and if you are subjecting your PLL to a step in, the response can be either over down, it can be critically damped or under damped the response. And to specify the nature of the response of the system, we have to evaluate damping coefficient. Damping coefficient is theta and theta is obtained by comparing the coefficient of S with the general equation and uh, the, uh, the specific equation that we are having here. So uh, it is time up. I will uh, go a little bit faster. The damping ratio it is theta is equal to 1 by 2 root of omega LPF by KPD KVC. And natural frequency we can get it as omega n is, is equal to omega LPF KPD KVC. And the final conclusion we can find out the a settling speed from this one and it is of utmost importance in most applications. The exponential delay element in this particular equation say e raised to minus theta omega n t decides the speed with which this output is going to settle. So in order to have a speedy response theta omega n must be maximized so that you can uh, neglect the effect of this exponential term and you know after maximizing this one what happens we will get from the expressions of omega n and theta. The product theta omega n can be found out, and from that you can find out it is equal to half of omega LPF. So what is required in order to maximize this one? Omega LPF, the cutoff frequency of the filter should be maximized. So the trade-off between settling speed and VCO pull is of utmost importance in finding out the speed of response. Lower the cutoff frequency of this omega LPF. The better will be the suppression of a high frequency component produced by the phase detector which is needed for the faithful operation of a VC. But when omega LPF is reduced, what happens? The settling time becomes more and so This is what about the simple PLL and there is one portion remaining that is the charge pump based PLL. But if you have built up on the basis of this simple PLL, to be easier to understand the working of a charge pump based PC PLN. Okay. Thank you for your patient listening. And can we have the discussion? Sir, uh, thank you for the session, sir. Sir, uh, we have uh, some questions uh, from our students. So, shall we move on to that session, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sir. So, here we have Christino asking. Would the increase in frequency from time T1 to T2 be detrimental to clock sensitive circuits such as image sensor clocking schemes? Uh, the, uh, can you uh, uh, tell the question once more? So he is asking, would the increase in frequency from time T1 to T2 okay. be detrimental to clock sensitive circuits? such as image sensor clocking schemes yeah definitely that is detrimental in the sense that the, uh, the sampling rate is of utmost concern 
the uh, locking is uh, the uh, the uh, the send a, a image or uh, the sampling frequency is that what uh, determines uh, how easily we can reconstruct the information. So definitely the uh, variation, wide variation in frequency, wide variation in frequency result in uh, a, a rate, a sampling rate, which will, that is not falling uh, within that uh, prescribed by the uh, criteria for sampling. So that can definitely be detrimental. And uh, bear in mind uh, that uh, uh, change in frequency from T1 to T2, it is not a very high change in frequency. The PLL will be designed in such a way that this change in frequency or the initiation in, of the change in frequency and the acquisition of the uh, log of the frequency, it will be done in a very, very, uh, very, very small duration of time. And that is what is explained in the last session so in, the, in this particular slide where uh, we have described about the settling speed and the settling speed is of most concern in the uh, high speed uh, circuits. Next. Okay, sir. So the next question is, suppose the VCO frequency is 100 times more than that of input frequency F, what shall we do? VCO frequency is uh, 100 times more than that of input frequency F. What shall we do? Uh, uh, there is a range of frequency that we have to understand. Every circuit is uh, designed to work in a uh, particular frequency or uh, designed to work in a particular range of frequencies. So, uh, there is a hundred fold increase in the uh, frequency between the in, uh, uh, frequency between the input and the output. Then the tracking uh, will be uh, uh, it is cumbersome. We have to uh, devise methods for or extra care should be there for uh, track uh, tracking of this kind of. Uh, and uh, I haven't gone through any uh, such circuits to uh, address that particular problem. So what I can do is I will get back to Asap once I find the answer for this question. Okay, sir. So, uh, sir, as we are running in short of time, we have a lot of questions here, and um, I'll just um, wind up with uh, one more question. So. Uh, another student, Mithun asks, how the phase shift caused by the capacitor influence the VCO? Uh, phase shift caused by the uh, capacitor in the sense. Influence the VCO. Yeah. Uh, the capacitance, even though we are not seeing any uh, capacitance physically in a circuit, but it's laid out. It is laid out, there will be enormous parasitic capacitance in a, an integrated circuit. That is what the, uh, that is where most of the time is being spent. And pertaining to your question, how it is going to affect the frequency? It is a tank circuit. The frequency from a tank circuit it is 1 by 2 pi into root of LC. Definitely, the variation in the capacitance will affect the oscillation frequency of your uh, VCO. So what we can do is, after laying out the circuit, you have to do a thorough analysis of the parasitic capacitor and not change the layout so that the effect of the capacitance can be minimized. Once you finalize the layout with, uh, or once you finalize the layout with the minimal capacitance, then you can apply this formula to find out the uh, frequency of oscillation. Okay, sir. 
Uh, so I think uh, we have reached the end of the session. And uh, thank you so much for giving a nice session for the students, sir. And so we are so happy to associate with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity in this subsession. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, I thank all the attendees out there. And we have some more doubts here. And we will be posting it later on, like all the session, the queries, and the answers for that. So hope you, you all had a nice session. And it's time to conclude. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you.